one thing we haven't seen so far, Dave, is that what you might call a signature counter-attack from Leicester City. Chelsea have been sitting in. Conte. Ujoa. Here's uh, Mares. Oh, it's a brilliant goal. It's that man again. Jamie Vardy has got another sequence going in goals at home. He's now made it six in a row. He's got 15 in the Premier League this season. You take your eye off him for a second, and that's what happens. Such a clever run. His movement is so good, and he, he just splits the two centre-backs here. Lovely ball in from Mares, but he needs the offer from his centre-forward, and what a good run it is from Vardy to the front post. In behind John Terry, across the front of Zuma, and it's a beautiful touch. And it's broken off Ramirez for Albrighton. Zuma kept his arms down by his side. There's a man over on the far side. It's Riyad Mahrez who can take it down. He's good enough to do that. Good enough to get Chelsea twisting and turning and good enough and great enough to score an outstanding goal. 2-0 Leicester, the two sharpest tools in the box in the Premier League are doing the business again. And John Terry and Chelsea can't cope. Courtois and Chelsea can't cope. But so often we see him find the inside of the far post. Aspilicueta is so narrow here, I'm not quite sure why. Eventually he gets out, he thinks he's got Mar out. No, no, he's not. It's a wonderful finish, and we've seen him do this before this season. Very little back lift. Aspilicueta not quite sure whether he's going down the outside or back onto his stronger foot. Courtois has no chance. Disgraced champions trying to get one back and they've got one back. It's been coming. Remy's got it. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. And by my voice, you can tell that last night, obviously I went to the Leicester game. I couldn't record anything last night because my voice was completely shot. I couldn't talk at all. Purely out of celebration and joy for what happened last night. So, as we all know, as you've just seen on most highlights, we beat Chelsea 2-1. What a phenomenal display it was, and it's a display that really has made pundits start taking us seriously for top four title contenders. And me, personally, it's made me feel higher about our aspirations for this season as well. But I do apologise for my voice, but it's all for a good cause, celebrating Vardy and Mahrez's goals and the full-time whistle. But let's talk about the game then and how it all went down. So, for 65 minutes of the game, I think we were dominant. And then for the last 25, we were poor and we let them get back into the game. We looked leggy. There was too much area in the pitch and I think Ranieri should have made a substitution a little bit earlier. But we ended up winning, so maybe he shouldn't have. But we did look leggy in that final, that final kind of 25 minutes. Ujoa especially, but he wanted to keep Ujoa on the pitch because of his aerial presence from set pieces. We're still poor at defending them. They had a chance kind of early on from a header and Nemanja Matic flicked it onto the crossbar. He was marked by Danny Simpson from corners and to me that's not a good fit. Simpson's far smaller and less physical than Matic but he's about our tallest other player who can go on him with Morgan and Hoof already on someone. I mean you look at Conte, he's only small so we can hardly put him on corners against someone. But we do go 1-0 up. You saw the goal there. The ball was played nicely into the middle of the park. Conte picks it up. Nicely into Ujoa. Ujoa holds it up. Turns it around the corner to Riyad Mahrez. Mahrez plays a wonderful ball into an oncoming Jamie Vardy. Lineker-esque. Attacks the front post. You never see strikers do it these days. Attack the ball. They wait for it and think, oh, the cross has got to come to me. But Vardy goes on instinct. Attacks the ball. Volleys it in past Thibaut Courtois. One of the best goalkeepers in world football. And we go 1-0 up and the stadium goes Berserk. It was a wonderful goal. One of our best goals scored this season for actual technical ability. The cross from Mares was wonderful on his left foot, of a, his wand of a left foot into Vardy. And like I said, that run was so important because so many strikers don't attack the ball anymore. He latched onto it, threw the centre half, both stood still, stood stationary. Vardy smashes it home and it's 1 0 to the city. Now, from early on in the game, you could tell that Riyad Mahrez was in one of those peaks of form where you just tell him to go out and play. I always say about Myers, when he's bad, he's the worst player on the pitch. But when he's good, he's the best player on the pitch. And today, he was the best player on the pitch. 
by an absolute country mile. You just send him out and tell him to play. He did a nutmeg in the first minute and got brought down. He was taking people on left, right and centre. Took uh, one on the edge of a box. Took about three people out of the game before he had a shot on his left foot. And he just, you could tell he was up for it. Unlike the Bournemouth game earlier this season where he was awful, he could tell you what he wasn't up for him from the first few minutes. But this one, he really was up for it. And then the second half started, the first half whistle obviously went, 1-0 at half time, you were happy because we didn't concede like against United, went in 1-0 up and you're thinking we really have got a chance now, uh, hold on to this 1-0, see out the rest of the game. At that point I didn't really see us getting a second, not that we, I didn't think we could get a second, but I thought it, Chelsea would kind of come out, be so much more stalwart in defence and wouldn't let us get as many chances. But, as luck might have it, and as you've already seen, a ball comes across from Mark Albrighton to the far stick, and that magician, the Messi, is there again, Riyad Mahrez, he takes a lovely kind of dummy faint two ways, just gets the ball out of Aspilicueta's way, and then with no backlift, whips it, Tottenham home-esque earlier in the season, to the far corner, past Courtois, and it was an amazing, amazing goal, right in front of where I sit, unbelievable scenes when that goal went in, the crowd erupted and it was a beautiful, beautiful finish. He's such a talented player. I mean, his natural ability is unbelievable and Algeria have got an amazing player in Mahrez. It's the way that he can control games when he's on it. When he really is on it, there isn't a better player in the Premier League. That was mentioned on the Monday Night Football last night and I don't think there's a better player in the Premier League when he's on it because tonight... He was on it and he was absolutely sensational. He did everything right in the game. His technical ability and his touch and his first control was just a wonder to behold. And for a country like Algeria and for a team like us, it's brilliant to have someone like that who's making headlines and making kind of a story of, of, of himself. He's making Leicester how good we are today, him and Vardy, and he's going to do the same for Algeria at national level because he's so talented and we may not sell him in January, we may not sell him next summer, but eventually this boy is destined for unbelievable heights and Barca, Real Madrid kind of territory. He's that good. He's so, so talented. But we go 2-0 up and then this is when we start to look leggy, kind of final 25 minutes, like I've already said. We're starting to look lackadaisical, not because we don't want it, but purely out of tiredness. They bring Remy on, they bring Fabregas on, Remy then scores, William, the most dangerous player of the night, I think it was, cross the ball in, Remy at the far stick, heads it in, and it's 2-1, and then you're kind of thinking, oh, it's going to be 2 all now. They looked so dominant, they looked like they were going to control us, and then the man who always does it, in the big games and in any game. And Golo Conte really stepped up. He was brilliant the whole night. But in those final 25 minutes, he, you're getting suffocating. You're suffocating. They've got too much pressure on you. And when Conte gets the ball, and you can breathe. Because he, he releases so much pressure off your team. The way he bursts forward out of defence. The way he can take the ball out on at speed. And just relieve so much pressure from your team. Even in the final minute when he kicked it out of play. It went miles out of play. And the relief of pressure from what he does is, is so important to us. We finished the game then, 2-1 winners, and it was a great feeling to beat Chelsea. I mean, to beat Mourinho, someone I hate. To beat Diego Costa, someone I hate. To beat Chelsea fans, people I, I don't really like a lot of them because they, they kind of expect too much. It's a brilliant, brilliant feeling as a City fan. It's brilliant to beat Chelsea. All the neutrals wanted us to win because it's a storyline, but media wanted us to win because it was a storyline. Everyone wanted us to win, and let's hope... This run continues. For Chelsea, on the flip side, they're really in trouble now. Not necessarily for relegation. I don't think they'll go down because they're too good. But for finishing in the bottom half or mid-table, I mean, they really, really are in that now. They're 20 points behind us. Just say that again out loud. Say it now. Anyone who's watching, say it out loud. Chelsea are 20 points behind us. It is phenomenal. Unbelievable. Everything Claudio's done since he's come in is brilliant. Everything Chelsea doing this season looks poor. I don't think Mourinho understands why these things are happening. I don't think he's ever been in this situation. He doesn't understand why his players aren't playing for him or why they're not winning games because he, he, he's never been in this situation before. But for us, the train keeps on rolling. This momentum train we've been on for so, so long. We've only lost one game since we lost to Chelsea last season and they've lost nine this season. It's an unbelievable feat by the players. Like I said, the momentum train keeps rolling. Next stop, Everton away before Christmas. If we win that, we're guaranteed top at Christmas Day. None of you would have thought that. An amazing start at the start of the season. Vardy to be top goal scorer in Leicester to win a week. League was two and a half million to one. If any of you had that, then you could be very lucky people. 
come the end of the season. But like I said, next stop Everton on this emotional roller coaster we are. Can we win? Can we go top of Christmas? I hope so. I think so. We need to stop Lukaku, but that'll all be in my preview. For now, enjoy it. Go into work. Soak up the atmosphere. Live for these moments, because as Leicester City fans, these don't come around that often. Enjoy it. Soak it all in. Watch the game every single moment of the day if you want to. Just enjoy everything that's happening to our football club at the moment. Please leave your comments down below. Let me know what you thought of the game. Please like the video, as always, and subscribe for more Leicester City content. Come on, the Foxes. We've beaten Chelsea. We're top of the league. Can we be dreaming? Can we now dream, Claudio? No, let's keep our feet on the ground. But as fans, let's dream. Come on, you Foxes.